May 1st, 1969, I landed in Vietnam. 29 days later, I was uh, with my company. They had set up an ambush that day to supposedly wipe out 30 NVA soldiers. And I was a corpsman, doc, medic. We get a click on the radio from our point man, and he says, my God, they're coming. And I see 30, 40 of them. A few minutes later, he clicks, or a few seconds later, he clicks back in to the commanding officer. There's twice as many behind them. They blow the Claymore mines. And just simultaneously, the explosion goes off, you see the flash, you, uh, you, you hear the screams and yells of the Viet Cong that are being wiped out at the time and being blown to bits, and then just all hell breaks loose. I'm laying there flat on the ground, <coughs> face down, and off to the side, an explosion. So I reach down, and I could actually feel the blood just oozing out of a gaping wound on my thigh. I turned over, and I'm looking straight up in the sky. And all I remember, if I'm lying, I'm dying, was a white rectangular something. And all I remember is, Michael, you just go do what you got to do and I'll take care of the rest. And during this very short period of time that I heard that message, everything was dead silent. I heard no explosions. I heard nobody yelling or screaming or corming up or anything. Everything was dead, dead silent. And that's when I knew everything was going to be all right, no matter what. I turned back over. Boom. I just started crawling around doing what I knew I had to do. From that moment on, after I heard the voice, if you will, um, I just went and started patching guys up. The most gratifying part of everything that I did, it's not the medals, it's not the ribbons, it's not the accolades, it's when 45 years later you get a call from somebody you never knew. Because I was only with this unit for four weeks. And he says, on behalf of me, my wife, my three children and seven grandchildren, thank you for saving my life. 